Okay. Uh, today we'll be discussing neoplasia, mm -hmm. uh, principles of neoplasia, like just the general basic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, first we'll discuss the like the terminology. So what do you guys think is the um, uh, definition of neoplasia? Mm -hmm. Hello. Does anybody want to type it in the chat? Yeah. Yes, so it's like, um, it's basically is, at least this was the definition that was given in um, the Robbins edition that I had. It's, um, wait, let me just... Um, it, 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 neoplastic cells are cells that are transformed um, because they continue to replicate um, ir irrespective of the regulatory influences that control normal cell growth. Yeah, that's also there in Robbins. Okay, and so then Robbins, in Robbins we discuss two terms that is benign and malignant. malignant. So what is benign and what is malignant? What is benign? Yeah, so benign is, uh, as Watson said, uh, benign is something that remains localized in one place and it doesn't invade to other tissues. Uh, and in, yeah. And malignant is one that uh, has a tendency to spread. Mm. No, I'll just change my stream. Okay, yeah, and malignant is, uh, it, it has the tendency to be able to spread to other tissues. Let me just hit share entire screen. Okay, um, so yeah, and basically uh, every, uh, every tumor, it has two components. It has the parenchyma and it has, um, which is the transform the neoplastic cells and then there is a stroma in which um, these cells are located okay so uh, then based on the nomenclature of benign and malignant so um, what can you say about the nomenclature of benign tumors what do they usually end with yeah so they usually end with the three suffix omas okay but um, yes like adenoma um, papillomas. All right. And 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 how is it different in malignant tumors? Yeah, malignant can be either carcinoma or or sarcomas. So, what are how are sarcomas different from carcinomas? Yeah, if it's if it's connective tissue, then it's usually sarcomas, um, such so from mesen like from blood mesen chymal cells of blood, okay mesen chymal cells basically connective tissues or fibrosarcoma, okay, uh, chondrosarcoma, and then ones that are derived from epithelium, they are called carcinomas, okay, mm, and then carcinomas, yeah, okay, um, then. Okay, now some tumors are like mixed tumor, like either tumors can have a well differentiated cells or they can have poorly differentiated cells. Okay, and some tumors are mixed tumors, which, uh, which means that they have, they have well differentiated cells as well as poorly differentiated cells. And uh, can you give me an example of a mixed tumor? Yeah. Any other example of mixed tumor, a special mixed tumor which starts with a T? <laughs> yeah. Teratoma is also um, 
you know, a special type of mixed tumors which has like some cells which are from the germ cell layer and they can, you know, basically differentiate into all the three types of cell lines. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, can you give me some examples of um, things which end with OMA but are not necessarily neoplasia? neoplasia? It is technically multiple myeloma. Okay. Um, I don't exactly know what my means is. Um, hamartoma is one of them. Hamartoma is basically, you know, like a tissue. But yeah, it's written over here that it could be neoplastic. Anyways, okay. And then choristoma is one of them. Another one. Hematoma, yeah. Hematoma also. Correct. Okay. And then I wanted to do this. So this is like a table which basically shows how um, the nomenclature of tumors. Um, so we can see all the malignant ones are either sarcoma sarcomas or carcinomas. And the ones which are of mesenchymal connective tissue, blood, and they are all end with sarcomas. And the ones which are of epithelial or origin, they all end with carcinomas. Um, and all the benign ones, they end with omas. Okay. Okay, so next we'll do uh, dif uh, like dif difference between benign and malignant tumors. Okay. So what are the points over which you differentiate between benign and malignant tumors? Like what are the points that differentiate benign from malignant tumors? Yeah, metastasis is one of them. Yeah. Yeah, not well. Differentiation. Differentiation, metastasis, and thermomyosination itself. Okay, so the first one is. Sorry. Okay, so the first one is differentiation and anaplasia. Okay, uh, so benign tumors they tend to be well differentiated and. Um, malignant tumors they tend to have anaplastic cells so what are anaplastic cells and what are the characteristics of anaplastic cells what are anaplastic cells yeah those are cells that lack differentiation okay and um, they're either made by basically it means backward formation so either they're made of made by de-differentiation of well-differentiated cells or they never really differentiated. They were primarily undifferentiated cells. Okay, so what are the characteristics of anaplastic cells? One of them is, um, I think, okay now has said. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they have loss of pol pol polarity and their, and what can you say about their nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio? Yeah, they have high NC ratio. Their nucleus is very hyperchromatic. Hello, Abby. Abby. Okay. Uh, and yeah. Okay. So so their ratio approaches approaches one is to one. What is the normal nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio? No, nucleus will be big. I mean. Yeah, nucleus will occupy more of the cell than cytoplasm. It will be high NC ratio. Hi. Um, so normally NC ratio is 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 6. Okay, and um, yeah. And they have, they have you know, mute, numerous mitosis and uh, typical like mitotic spindles. They have loss of polarity as okay now had said. And... Yeah. 
so that those are basically anaplastic cells okay so usually anaplastic cells are found in metastatic malignant tumors and tumors which are rapidly growing so the more rapidly growing a tumor is the more anaplastic a tumor is and the less likely it is um, to have specialized functional activity as yes, i think yeah yeah okay then then there's this term called dysplasia what is dysplasia Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly hypertrophy, but it is like a loss of uniformity disorder, this basically disorder, like loss of uniformity in individual cells and the architectural orientation. Okay, so they may have, um, you know, hyperchromatic nuclei, they may have pleomorphism, like they might look like somewhat like anaplastic cells, but in like dysplasia as such is not neoplastic. Uh, they're not it's not neoplasia it has a tendency to become neoplasia when they when this plastic changes they become marked and they involve the entire thickness of the epithelium then we call it carcinoma in situ so carcinoma in situ is when this plastic changes are marked and when they involve the entire epithelium so if it's like basically the dysplasia it starts at one end and then it involves the entire epithelium uh, then it becomes carcinoma in situ But dysplasia as such is reversible. If, if the stressor that causes, causes it has been removed, dysplasia is re reversible. But once it becomes neoplastic, it is not reversible. Okay, um, sorry. Okay, so... And then based on rate of growth, how do you differentiate between benign and malignant? Yeah, so benign, benign tumors generally tend to grow very slowly over the course of months and years and benign and malignant tumors tend to grow very fast and the rate of growth of tu malignant tumors also correlates with their level of differentiation as we said earlier rapidly growing tumors tend to be less differentiate differentiated but it's not always the case um, there are benign tumors that grow rapidly such as leomyomas and um, yeah and there may be malignant tumors which don't grow as rapidly okay then Yeah, I guess you covered that part. Okay, so and then and then in Robbins, uh, there was this paragraph given about cancer stem stem cells. So basically, like um, cancer cells, they they have the they have the capacity to replicate uh, proliferate indefinitely. So they must like so I don't know. Robbins was given like um, that like the hypothesis is that basically only a a group of cells in in the cancer tissue have that potential to you know renew indefinitely and whereas all the other cells are like don't have that potential mm, yeah i don't know why okay uh, then mm, yeah and then the third the other the other differentiation between benign and malignant tumors is um, as people already said that um, benign tumors tend to be well encapsulated and malignant tumors they tend to infiltrate and invade the surrounding tissues and they also tend to metastasize um, for example like fibroid adenomas and all they are well encapsulated but um, not all benign but it's not necessary that all benign tumors will be encapsulated there are benign tumors which are not encapsulated but they tend to have like a plane of differentiation between the tumor and the normal tissues um, and there are malignant tumors that seem to be encapsulated but um, they will have like you know some crab like microscopic infill like structures that like crab like feet as it's described in robins that um infiltrate into the adjacent structures so like broadly we can say that if that's the case but there are exceptions um then also metastasis um metastasis is something that is a very what do you say uh, characteristics of malignant tumors and um yeah and so yeah 
what are the modes of mm, uh, metastasis in malignant tumors? Yes, hematogenous is one, lymphatic and direct invasion, yes. So um, by direct invasion, it's basically that they spread through natural bo body cavities. Can you give me an example of a uh, tumor that is spread through uh, by seeding into tissues by direct invasion? Does colon cancer spread? Yeah, ovarian does. I like. I think ovarian does like a mental caking and cook and cook tumor and stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And can you give me an example of? Uh, then there are some brain tumors like medulloblastoma and ependom, 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 ependomoma that can you know spread through the CSF. <laughs> okay, um, then there are lymphatic. Can you give me examples of tumors that spread through lymphatics? <laughs> okay, so yeah, breast cancers spread through through lymphatics. They spread through adjacent nodes, and they can spread through the other breast. Yeah, I think Krukenberg is direct seeding, right? Not sure. Anyways, and um, so what is sentinel? So because of this lymphatic spread, there's a concept of sentinental lymph node. So what is sentinental lymph node? Yeah. So how do we use that? Yeah. How do we um, clinically use that? It's the first lymph node which drains the tumor. I should just show the screen, I guess. Um, yeah, so basically, um, for example, when we're doing a mastectomy or something, uh, we, we, f we do sentinental lymph node biopsy. So we check the first lymph node and we see if that has been, if there are tumor cells in the first lymph node. If there are no tumor cells in the first lymph node, that means it, it has not spread to other lymph nodes. Instead of removing all the lymph nodes, yeah, yeah. As Okay now said, if it's if it's invaded, then it's metastasized, and if it's not, then we don't need to do lymphadenectomy. So we can save a lot of like we we, we can decrease the morbidity uh, for the patient. So that's how we use sentinental lymph node. Mm, then hematogenous is the other way. If it's invade invaded, like if it's uh, if it's invaded to the lymph nodes. INV involved, yeah, involved, correct, yeah, okay, so, um, then can you, sp uh, can you, um, for, for tumors that spread, spread through hematogenous root, what are the two most common organs involved? Yeah, lung is one, second, <laughs> other than lung. <laughs> Liver, yeah, liver is the second one. Okay, so li li liver and lung are the two most common ones, and vertebra is also uh, one of them. Um, okay. Which, which tumors generally have vertebral metastasis, commonly have vertebral metastasis? Yeah, prostate, breast, and even thyroid, okay. Um, then and there are some tumors which tend to grow within the vessels. Can you name a tumor which tends to grow within the veins? No. Like, tends to grow within the veins means the tumor is in the organ and it's, it's not really metastasizing, it's just growing, it's growing inside the veins. 
yes, renal tumors. Yeah. Okay. Even hepatic some hepatocellular carcinomas they tend to grow into the portal and the hepatic veins. Okay. Okay, then we'll go to the next one. So then we'll do molecular basis of neoplasia. Since Ed said epidemiology is not important, I'm skipping it. Okay. Um, yeah. So there is molecular basis. Okay, so um, basically, um, yeah, what is responsible for neoplasia is genetic changes, right? So these genetic changes can either be inherited or they can be acquired because of the environment. And there are four genes that are responsible for neoplasia. What are the four genes, four classes of genes? Yes, oncogenes. Proto oncogenes, that's one class. Tumor suppressor genes is another class. Yes, genes regulating apoptosis is um, the third class. And genes regulating DNA repair are the fourth. So, what are proto oncogenes? What, are, what is the difference between proto oncogenes and oncogenes? Not uh, cells exactly, but normal genes. So proto oncogenes are basically normal. Yes. So uh, any changes in proto oncogenes, and one like once they start, like they have mutations which makes them like they have the tendency to promote. Uh, growth. So if they if they get changed, proton genes get changed in such a way that they um, start promote they overcome the negative regulation. Yeah, uh, that is on them. They become oncogenes. Okay, so mostly oncogenes are transcription factors, growth regulating proteins, and proteins involved in cell sur survival and stuff. Okay, and then we, okay, yeah. Okay, then we come to tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes are two kinds. So can you tell me the two kinds of tumor suppressor genes, like two broad characteristics? Both of them start with a G. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so one of them is the like what is called the guardian of the genome. Yeah. So what is the other G? Yeah. Our, our, that's the governor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me just. Okay, so governors are basically a class of genes that um, if there is a mutation in this gene, it can, it can cause, like it can, like there is, basically these governors, what they do is they put a break on cell proliferation. So if there is a 
uh, mutation in those genes, then there will be indefinite cell proliferation. So these are governors. Guardians are ones that check for genomic damage. And um, if, there, if, if, if there is significant damage to the genes, they initiate a damage control response. And uh, if, if the damage could not be controlled, they induce apoptosis. So if these genes are mutated, then you know, even cells with which have significant genomic damage will be able to mutate. So that is TP53 and that's why it's called the guardian of the genome. Okay. Okay, the next we come to the kinds of genetic lesions that are seen in cancer. Um, so there are some karyotypic changes that occur in tumors which um, make them neoplastic. So what are some of the karyotypic changes? Yes, increased telomerase is one that is called, what is that called? But that is like later, it's not in this one. Like for example, in CML. <laughs> what is the genetic alteration in CML? Translocation, yes. So there is translocation. Yeah. Okay, so what based, how does translocation cause neoplasia? So there are many, many different ways. In one way, what it does is it causes, um, it, uh, it causes a proto-oncogene to be uh, like constitutively expressed without any, reg uh, without any regulation. Um, Video is gone. Can you see it? <laughs> Can you guys see the stream? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay so, so in so basically, for example, in yes, for example, in Burkitt lymphoma, what happens is yeah, so Burkitt lymphoma, there is but how, how can square not see? How many people cannot see? Square, you have to join stream to see. I think my internet connection is good enough. Now can you guys see? <laughs> Forget it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So basically, uh, where was I? Yeah, here. In Burkitt lymphoma, there is an MYC gene, which is a proto-oncogene, okay? Mm, that is located in chromosome 8. So it's not like, it's involved in normal cellular function, but it's not like expressed all the time, okay? So it's like in chromosome 8. Okay, so what happens is there is a translocation and it um, gets situated next to, next to, uh, uh, next to, next to an immuno immunoglobulin, um, producing genes. So immunoglobulin producing genes is expressed all the time. So because of that, this MYC gene is also produced, uh, produced all the time. Okay, so that that activates it to an oncogene and causes growth proliferation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, then the other way. Then another example. Then another example of a tumor. Uh, uh, another is in follicular lymphoma in which what is happening? Uh, follicular lymphoma in which BCL2, uh, the BCL2 gene, gene on chrom mm, uh, gets overexpressed on chromosome 18, or the, also by because of immunoglobulin elements. Okay. Then there is um, the one in uh, um, CML, as um, someone had said earlier, Square had said earlier. Uh, uh, there is 
uh, translocation between chromosome 9 and chromosome 22. So let's just put up that picture. Yeah, so basically this is the uh, ABL gene, uh, gene in chromosome 9 and the BCR gene in chromosome 22. So um, this is like a reciprocal translocation um, and the ABL gene goes with the BCR uh, locus over here and there's this one chimeric protein produced. And so what happens because of this is that um, the ABL gene is uh, like it is fused with something that has uh, potent tyrosine kinase activity. So it becomes constitutively produced and that is what causes is seen in the tumor. Um, yeah, so that's how translocation causes tumors. Um, then another, the other one is deletions. Yeah, the other way uh, the genetic change that causes tumors is deletions. Um, can you give an example of tumors that can occur because of deletion? Or any gene that may be involved in deletion? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Okay, so basically what genes will be involved? Like basically what happens is basically that um, this can occur in like tumor suppressor genes. So tumor suppressor genes, we, we need both the alleles. Yeah, uh, we need both the alleles for um, tumor suppressor genes to become in deactivated. Yeah, like RB gene. So if, if suppose a, a person already has a mutation in one gene and that is not active, and so that the other gene is uh, the one that's active and it's, you know, protecting, suppressing the tumor. If that gets deleted, um, then, um, you know, that pay, pay, that person becomes post, uh, prone to tumors. So that's, that's basically deletion causing a loss of heterozygosity. Mm, so that ha tends to happen in RB. It can also happen in uh, P P53. Okay. Then the other way, um, at, at the other um, change, that can happen is gene ampl amplification okay so gene amplification means like um, basically proto oncogenes can be converted into oncogenes by like amp over over amplification of uh, proto oncogenes so if the tumor cells produces 100 and 100 copies of proto oncogenes it can become it can get changed into oncogenes and do you, do you guys know an example of gene amplification causing tumor Yes, in breast cancer. So what is the um, receptor or what is the gene that's involved in breast cancer that causes this? <laughs> yeah, uh, the ERBB1, uh, which is involved, uh, ERBB2, uh, I think, which is the HER2 new amplification. So basically, um, the tumor produces a lot of HER2 new uh, receptors and HER2 new um, growth factor I guess and that causes the cells to proliferate yeah it's okay okay, it's okay. okay and then uh, the third change the fourth genetic change is aneuploidy so aneuploidy is basically uh, when like there is complete absence of one of the chromosomes and that usually tends to happen when um, uh, like uh, you know when the cell cycle uh, control mechanism is not working properly. So usually when the cell cycle, uh, you know, the division is happening, um, all the, the microtubules and all, they work properly to avoid aneuploidy. But if that doesn't happen properly, uh, they, you know, there can be aneuploidy and that predisposes to carcinogenesis. Why are we, why are we blackmailing that poor kid, man? It's cool. He's feeling nice. What did you? Okay, so what are the hallmarks of, oh, wait, did we finish this? Right. Then there are mi mirNAs, uh, which are, which regulate 
transcription. So if there is over an, uh, expression of mRNAs, it can um, reduce the expression of tumor suppressor genes um, or, or it can cause over expression of proto oncogenes. Okay, and then there are epigenetic changes which are basically like um, the, the promoter if the tube pro <laughs> okay and then there are uh, so basically they cause methylation of if there is methylation of promoter that particular um, area will not be expressed so if there's any changes in that area um, that then also um, there could be neoplasia anyways okay so now we go to hallmarks of cancer uh, neoplasia so what are the hallmarks of neoplasia Hello. Yeah, angiogenesis is one. Evasion of cell death is one. There are like eight. Um, yes, immune system is one. Um, yeah, in, in like insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals, that's one. Limitless replicative potential immortality is another. One thing we discussed before. Yeah, um, touch in addition, yeah, I guess. Uh, ability to invade and metastasize. And... Um, Tumor promoting inflammation and genomic instability. Okay, that's all of them. Yeah. So the first one we'll we'll discuss the first one that is self sufficiency in growth signals. So basically, self sufficiency in growth signals are just activation of things that promote growth. So those are basically oncogenes. Um, okay. So there are some like growth factors, like some tumors which activate um, like a con continuously produce growth factors and their receptors. So it goes into a loop and the cells keep on dividing because of that. Uh, in some cases, um, like there is such that the genes that um, code for these growth factors, they get translocated or they get in a place that they're continuously produced as we discussed earlier. Um, then, and then there are mutations in uh, genes that in like in uh, encode for the molecules that cause growth um, growth cell growth. So, for example, RAS it um, it inhibits cell cycle cell cycle, and if there is a mutation in that, the cell will keep keep on dividing, keep on growing. Okay, so that can also cause. Let's just take a look. So like over here, um, growth factor binds to growth factor receptor. So if if there if there is like overproduction of growth factor, that can lead to neoplasia. If this dephosphorylation does not work properly from GDP to GTP, if RAS does not get inactivated, that can lead to neoplasia. Yeah, there are eight actually. He missed one. It's okay, one. Who cares how many are there? Okay. Uh, then, uh, then, then, or if any of these genes are mutated, that can also cause neoplasia. If there are transcription factors that get activated, like MYC protein, that can lead to neoplasia. So, or any any error in this pathway can cause neoplasia. Okay. <laughs> okay. How come so many people are unable to see the screen? Wait, I'll just start the stream again. What we'll do is we'll change this. There is stream. Can you guys see stream now?
Okay. Yeah, okay, then there are, okay. So then there are cyclins and cycling dependent kinases. What cyclins and cycling dependent kinases do is that they um, prevent the transition of cell cycle from one phase to another in various phases. So all of these cyclins, these are proteins that act on different transition points. Like cyclin CDK4, CDK6 acts from G1 to S. Um, CDK2, CDK1 acts from S to G2. Okay, so basically they act on different phases of the cell cycle. And these cyclin DK inhibitors, they prevent the transition. Okay, they prevent the transition. Okay, so if if there is if the, and if there are like see if over here like the RV gene, if it gets phosph phosphorylated, you know it go there's transition from G1 to S phase. So basically, these these regulate how much uh, how how much the cell can proliferate. So if there is any error in these things, that can cause cell proliferation. Mm. Yep. So these are basically like checkpoints. This see if how is the nucle uh, genomic material? Is the cell capable of? Is the cell okay to neo re replicate, or is it a neoplastic cell? Does it have mutations, and do they stop? And if this mechanism is disturbed, then you know there can be um, the cell can just keep on proliferating, and it becomes neoplastic. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we have, so that was um, tendency to self-support growth. The second hallmark is insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals. So if tumor, when tumors become insensitive to growth inhibition, um, that can, um, that can cause neoplasia. Okay, so, oh, so, so RB gene is one of those that's involved in um, this. Um, so what is the two hit two two hit hypo? It's okay if you guys can't see. We'll just be see. And I mean, I'm recording this, so I guess my screen will be visible later on. Okay. Um, yeah. What is the two hit hy hypothesis? Yeah, it's seen in retinoblastoma. That's it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So basically, if uh, uh, like if the person already has, yeah. So if the person has already already has one gene that's mutated, um, then any change in the other gene. Any somatic change in the other gene can cause um, both of the genes to lose their function, and it can cause tumor. Um, so it could cause retinoblastoma. Okay, so this is like the familial, like basically he, the person inherits one mutated gene from their parents, and the other one gets mutated sporad uh, sporad somatically, and that causes retinoblastoma. So they're more prone to retinoblastomas, breast cancer, small cell cancers, bladder cancer. Okay, so that is. RB gene. Then we have TP53. And what is the if a person has mutated TP53? What what is what is the thing called? What is the syndrome called? Yeah, leave leave from any. Okay, so yeah, leave from any. Mm. Yeah, I don't think there's anything important here. So basically, that this is how RB works. Um, this is the G1 to S phase transition, okay? And basically, when retinoblastoma gene gets hyperphosphorylated, it activates E2F. And this E2F um, is a transcription factor and causes transcriptions. Okay, so um, these cyclin, these uh, cyclin growth inhibitors and CDK inhibitors, they inactivate this and they they prevent growth factors. So when there's any mutation in RB or the cyclin dependent kinases or the inhibitors that can cause this cycle to get activated. 
okay and um, what is a virus that when infected causes errors in the rb retinoblastoma gene Um, yeah, um, I don't think it's, it's Epstein Barr virus. Which type of HPV? Is it Epstein Barr virus? I think maybe it's also. Which type of HPV I meant? Or just HPV, I guess. HPV encodes E7 that binds to RV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, then we have TP53. So what does TP53 basically do? Um, yeah, I think I think all of those HPVs that cause cause cancer. Basically, the thing with HPV is that HPV encodes protein E7 that causes um, um, that deactivates RB, and then there is another protein which um, deactivates TP53 E6. Okay. Um, so now we see how how TP53 uh, how P53 um, regulates the genome. So basically, what it does is that if a cell has DNA damage, um, P53 gets act or if there's hypoxia, P53 gets activated and it binds to DNA, and it can cause different things in the cells. It can cause the cell to like stop dividing and go into senescence, so the cell stops dividing, or it can use. Um, um, cell repair mechanisms and it can genomic repair mechanisms and it can cause successful repair or it can activate pro apoptotic proteins such as BACs and it can cause apoptosis however if um, p53 is deactivated none of these things happen so even in cells that have nuclear damage or mutations there, there will be continuous proliferation okay Then, um, yeah, thank you, Abby. Uh, then there are, yeah, we did all this. Yeah, we'll just do it from here. Okay, so that is one of the things. The other one is TGF beta, which is basically um, a growth inhibiting gene. Um, no, it's a growth it's a growth factor proliferator, but it inhibits inhibitors basically. Or okay, yeah. Um, and it is compromised in tumors when the its receptors is mutated. Okay, and um, then there is contact inhibition. Contact inhibition is regulated by E cadherin. So if E cadherin is lost in malignant cells, there is contact inhibition, and um, what about uh, HNPCC? Which gene is involved in HNPCC? Yeah. Second. And um, yeah, and APC gene is APC gene is also involved. Or is that something? So is APC gene is also um, APC gene is basically uh, it regulate regulates the destruction of beta catenin. And if beta catenin is not destroyed, it tends to um, the cell tends to multiply without any regulation. Where is that? Here. So usually APC inhibits binds to beta catenin and inhibits it. If there's no APC beta catenin um, 
promotes DNA replication and that causes cancer. That is seen in colon carcinomas. Oh, that's an F, if I mean, I didn't know what this called for. Yeah. I think TCC is different. Okay. Then, then the other hallmark is evasion of cell death. So if for evasion of cell death, um, basically there is any error in the apoptosis pathway. So if there is um, the FAS and the FAS ligand, if there is um, reduced level of CD95, the FAS ligand, then apoptosis does not happen. Or if the death-induced signaling co complex is mutated, then apoptosis does not happen. Um, P53 in or cytochrome C is affected, then apoptosis not happens. Or uh, if there is, if the caspases inhibitors don't work, then apoptosis does not happen. So all of these loss of apoptosis causes the tumor cells to evade cell death. So that also um, contributes to neoplasia. Neopla then, yeah. Yes. Then they have a limitless. Then they have li limitless replicative potential as someone talked about the telomerase activity. So normally uh, in normal cells, the telomeres keep getting short and at some point the cells keep dividing. But in metaplastic cells, um, they reactivate telomerase. So they just keep on dividing and they essentially become immortal. Um, then the angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is basically that um, tumor cells need you know vascular that blood for growth they need nutrients for growth so they basically activate angiogenetic factors um which allows them to you know have good blood supply so that tends tends to you know allow them to remain keep dividing and how do how do cells metastasize like what is the invasion metastasis like what is the mechanism of metastasis Yeah, basically they first, oh, there's this picture. So first, basically, there will be some intracellular connections using e catheterins. There is loss of those connections. Then the basement membrane, the cells secrete like proteolytic enzymes into the basement membrane, which breaks down the basement membrane. This allows the cell to go through, through the basement membrane, invade the basement membrane, okay? Addition and invasion of the basement membrane. And then go into the in, in like uh, go into the vessels. From the vessels, they have they make form. They combine with platelets and all that. They form from a small embolus, and then they adhere to other basement membranes in other places. From where they deposit and they undergo antigenesis and grow. Yeah. So how how is it decided that which tumor goes where? Where do the how do how do the tumor cells decide where to go? Some of Yes, uh, yeah, and some of this is also because of homing of tumor cells. So what is ho homing of tumor cells? Homing is basically like certain, yeah, a certain organs, they express receptors which the tumor cells tend to bind to. For example, breast cancers, they have high levels of CXCR4 and CCR7. So they tend to metastasize. Uh, this, these receptors are only produced in organs where the breast cancer cells tend to metastasize. So one of the applications of this is that if we block these receptors, we may be able to limit metastas metastasis. Okay. Then what are the metabolic changes that undergo in neoplastic cells or what is the Warburg effect? Yeah, they switch to aerobic gly glycolysis. Irrespective of whether they have oxygen or not, they don't use mitochondria and they switch to aerobic glycolysis. Um, the bad thing about that is that they're not producing as much ATP as they need to. Uh, but in most rapidly dividing cells, uh, 
switching to aerobic glycolysis which is called the warburg effect is 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 is, is good for them because uh, even though they're not producing as much atp as they as they have to, as a lot of atp they produce pyruvate and they can use pyru that pyruvate into um you know producing chemicals that are or molecules that they need for replication so for them it's it's a win win so that's how it helps them and how do we use this a phenomenon of the fact that they use glucose is that we use them in pet scans so in pet scan we basically give fluoro deoxy glucose so all the cells which are multiply rapidly divide multiplying um they will be undergoing aerobic glycolysis so we can use um this pet scan to see where all the tumor cells are located okay um then then the other hallmark was a uh, genomic instability so genomic instability is basically any any mutations or defects in mechanisms that call that that help in dna repair so what are the three three mechanisms that help in dna repair what are the three types of dna repair yes basic scission repair and nucleotide excision and i think nucleotide excision and basic excision is the same thing um then there's mismatch repair and then there is recombination repair so if if there is any defects in which mismatch repair what is the syndrome that is associated with it like what is the disease in which there is defect in mismatch repair that is hereditary non polyposis colon cancer okay so in that we a lot of a lot of different tumors are involved because the mismatch repair is, does not work properly and in nucleotide excision repair what is the disease involved that allows the defect in nucleotide excision repair yes ceridoma pigmentosa so what happens is um because of def uh, this defective dna repair our skin becomes more sensitive to uv rays and the damage by uv rays reason and that causes ceridoma pigmentosa okay and then then there is a uh, mismatch repair in mismatch repairs a lot of different um diseases are involved such as fanconi syndrome uh, ataxia telangiectasia all of them in, like in any any of those um, things are involved in mismatch repair then um, then the other hallm hallmark was tumor promoting inflammation so if there is inflammation because of any um any stressor any chronic infection um that can cause neoplasia for example if you know bad at esophagus because of smoking or h pylori infection hepatitis b hepatitis c all of these eventually cause can cause neoplasia and that's probably due to inflammation so that's how that that is also one way that it can cause so um i think we'll stop the class now um the the other two parts are left is i think etiology and um the tumor markers and stuff we'll take that later maybe okay i hope you guys i hope it was a little bit helpful i think thing was a bit chaotic so yeah thank you for staying for an hour and listening <laughs> i don't have any homework you can yeah thank you for participating too okay bye bye everyone